Hello, what is going on guys? I hope everybody's doing well today and welcome back to another Bleach Immortal Souls video. In this video, I got the final tier list for you guys and it will be the Vermilion Burge tier list. This is the final tier list out of the four tier lists that I said I will be making and we will be going over the signed Vermilion Burge characters right over here. Um, and this tier list is actually the least characters in it. Um, the Tiger one had 10 characters. The Tiger one did have Orheima and Ichigo, which are technically not SSRs, but I did think they deserved a place on that tier list. So technically, the Vermilion Bird tier list does have the least SSR slash UR characters in it. Um, now, this tier list will be based off of my opinion. I always have to say that in any tier list video, because if I don't say that... I can reassure you that a couple of people will attack me in the comment section or on Discord. So this is my personal opinion. If you guys do not agree, it is totally fine. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I always recommend players to do their own research and make their own decisions because it is up to you whether you want to use that character or not. Now for the Vermilion Bird tier list, I honestly had a lot of fun going over the characters like, um, you know, before I made the tier list because I realized most of these characters down here all of them had very very unique skills like their skills are very very different from the most characters that are in the game and i'm honestly really excited to go ahead and go over them so enough talking let's go ahead and get started the first character we got on the tier list right here is going to be ishin which is ichigo's dad now i'm gonna go ahead and put him in beach here now ishin is his rage attack is extremely good you can deal millions of damage with his rage attack i've seen his rage attack do up to 5 million damage man the reason his rage attack is so good is because it can, as soon as you rage with Ishin, it can trigger a DOT um, on the enemy. It, it guarantees a trigger, by the way. It's not a chance to trigger. It guarantees to trigger a DOT on the enemy. So if you are running a DOT team and Ishin rage attacks, he's going to trigger every single DOT and deal a bunch of damage. Now, that sounds very good, but the reason I only put him in B tier is because that's really only good in PvE events. Um, in PvP, you don't really have that much time to be sacking up DOT, and also his passive skill and master skill are decent, they're nothing crazy, but what really makes him shine in PvE is going to be his rage attack because he can deal millions of damage with his rage attack and that's why I went ahead and put him in B tier because I personally believe that he is only good for PvE events like Defend the Karakura Town event or something like Squad Boss. Now the character after that we got right here is going to be Loopy. Now I'm get I'm gonna put Loopy in C tier. Now don't get me wrong, Loopy is honestly not that bad. He can do bleed damage, um, he can also add bleed stacks and he creates a shield for himself and he can help um, your front row allies to take less damage. Now while all that sounds pretty decent, it's still not very good because most of these characters you see under him can do way better stuff. I, I wouldn't run him as my Vermilion Bird choice character unless it's an extremely specific situation. So that's why I put him in C tier because I honestly cannot see anybody running him because he, like I said, these characters right under him are just way better choices. Now the character we got right here is going to be Okiora, the normal version and not the Resurrection. Now Okiora gets an S rank. Now let me explain myself. Okiora is honestly, he is the best PvE character. I think he's even better than Kenpachi. Because if you're doing something like Squad Boss and defend the Karakura Town event, Okiora will guarantee you 10% more damage. And 10% more damage for 10 rounds is a lot, man. That can be all the way up to 10, 20 million damage. 10% damage is a lot. Not to mention, he also heals all of your team. And he's a DOT character himself because he can do burn damage. Now, while he may not be a god in PvP, he's still pretty good in PvP, by the way. He may not be a god in PvP, but this man in PvE, in my opinion, is the best character, even better than Kampachi's support. That 10% damage alone just puts him in S rank for me. On top of that, he does have the heals, like I said, and his burn damage. So that's why I put him in S rank, just because of the support he offers for PvE gameplay. Now, the next character we got right here is Xyloporo, and this is the SSR version. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give him an A rank. Now, once again, there's two versions. There's the UR version, which is in his, like, Resurrection form, and there's his normal version right here. Now, his normal version is actually very, very interesting. Um, his mastery skill gives him a 20% block chance, which is absolutely amazing, and his rage attack doesn't even deal any damage, actually. It heals himself, and his passive skill helps him increase his chance to proc his mastery skill 
which is obviously really good because he has a 20% block chance increase and also not to mention his rage attack does boost his damage but that really doesn't matter but it's still a nice little boost and his passive skill does also allow him to take less damage. For, uh, keep in mind he's a really really good Vermilion Bird character as a tank obviously and nothing else. If you put him as a tank with the healing he'll be doing to himself and that 20% block chance it will be activated a lot because his passive helps him activate his mastery skill. That's why I put him in A rank just because as a tank he's absolutely amazing. And not to mention he also gives rage for your back row allies so that's even more support right there. Xyloporo's SSR is actually weirdly good. I honestly didn't think that Laporo was going to be good especially the SSR version but they didn't disappoint me with him. He's a really interesting character man. I'm really excited to try him whenever he does come out. Ah, now we got the boy Shinji right here, man. Shinji, I have a pass with him, obviously. I never... Well, when he first came out a long, long time ago, he was actually pretty good. Then they updated him, and I was complaining a lot about him. But now that I'm seeing the rage, like, denial slash rage reduction kind of meta starting to kick in, I'm starting to respect Shinji a lot more. I'm going to go ahead and give him an A tier. I don't think he's worthy of S tier, unfortunately, but he is definitely worthy of A tier. Um, he does reduce rage by 250, I believe, to the highest rage enemy, which is good because you don't want them to rage. He also decreases the rage recovery rate, which is pretty good. And he does attack all enemies as well. Now, he does do pretty good damage when he attacks all enemies, which is one of the main reasons I put him in A rank. Um, but... His passive is also a really good team. A really good team. <laughs> His passive is also a really good skill. His passive makes your back row allies take 20% less damage. That's honestly quite amazing because the back row intends to die first all of the time. So that's why I went ahead and give Shinji an A rank because after you know seeing this rage stuff start to come out with all these new characters. Shinji's starting to become more respectable. I still do think he should be better, but unfortunately, that's where I'm going to be ranking him at right now. A rank. Now, we got URNL. Um, she's probably top three characters in the game, in my opinion. She's absolutely amazing. Her mastery skill does crazy, crazy amounts of damage because she ignores defense. Her rage attack attacks all enemies, puts bleed, has a chance to stun them as well. Uh, and her passive skill is also amazing because she is boosting herself with a bunch of damage. Nell is very, very good. I would recommend to use her as a Vermilion Bird character choice because she's honestly low-key busted. And she does have a 40% chance to stun the primary target, which is a lot. So that's why I went to add and put an S rank just because she does do crazy amounts of damage. And her master skill also does crazy amounts of damage. And she also has more attack bonds than usual, which will which will help her get to a pretty high amount of attacks when her bonds do become available. Now, the character we got right here is going to be Yachiro. Unfortunately, Yachiro is going to go into C tier. Yachiro is insane, insanely good female support team. However, unfortunately, female... Actually, would the female team be bad now nowadays with all these new characters come out? I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think a female team can be possible with all these characters coming out? Because Yachiro, if you guys don't know, gives, I believe, like, something like 30% attack to, like, female characters, which is absolutely nutty. Um, but other than that, she pretty much doesn't do anything, unfortunately. And that's why I put her in C tier, because female teams are not very meta. I don't even see them at all. And she, as a character, honestly doesn't offer much as well. Now, Hiyori right here, I'll go ahead and put in B tier. Hiyori would have been A tier when she first came out for me, but she did drop to B tier just because of all these new characters. Hiyori does increase her own defense. She can also heal from her rage attack and her mastery skill, which is pretty nice. Um, which is why I went ahead and put her in B tier, because she's basically a tank, honestly. And the fact that she is able to heal that much is very nice. And her passive skill also allows her to go above her maximum HP. And with all the healing she's going to be doing, she's going to be tanking pretty well. So that's why I went ahead and put her, put her in B tier. But I don't think she deserves an A tier just because she doesn't have the block chance possibility like Xyloporo does right over here. Now, last but not least, we have UR Xyloporo. Now, this was honestly a hard one. I was, for me, it was between A and S. It was really hard, but I think I'm going to go ahead and give him an S rank. Now, Xyloporo, his mastery skill is not very good. 
It has a 20% chance to disorient, and it can also heal himself and deal additional damage. No, it cannot heal himself. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it cannot heal himself. His mastery skill um, deals additional damage, and it has a 20% chance to disorient, which is not very great. However, his rage attack does attack all enemies and guarantees poison on every single enemy, which is pretty nice, and it can also increase the DOD damage over time. Now, the reason I put him in S is because of his passive skill. He has his passive skill. Every time you kill an enemy, there's a 50% chance. Yep, a 50% chance for him to be revived with 600 rage on like 50% HP. I'm sorry, guys. Give me a second. Let me actually double check on that. Um, I'm on the game right now. So, his passive... Uh, let's take a look here. So, if you kill an enemy, there's a 50% a chance for him to come back alive with 60% of his HP, which is crazy high, and 500 rage. So, say your Xyloporo dies, right? Your turn comes, you kill an enemy, he'll come revive, he'll come back to life. He gets killed again, you kill an enemy. The next round, he'll come back alive again. Xyloporo is honestly a really interesting character. Both his SSR version and UR version are very interesting characters, and I cannot wait to test them out. But honestly, because of that ability alone, I'm going to go ahead and put him in S tier. Not to mention, every time he dies, he has a chance to poison all enemies for two rounds. So him having low HP is actually going to be very good. Uh, just because you actually kind of want him to die. Because he's going to die, possibly trigger poison on all enemies, and then kill an enemy, get him back to life if you can. Have him die again and just keep doing that DOT kind of repeating. Now obviously that's not necessarily going to work in PvP. It will work, but it's not going to work very well because battles do not last that long. But I still think he deserves S-Rank just because of that 50% chance to get revived. That's honestly Loki nutty and I cannot wait to actually try him out when he does come out. But yeah, this was my Vermilion Bird tier list. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and if you would change anything as well. And also, leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns, as usual. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you do not miss any futures, future uploads in the future. Damn, that sounded weird. <laughs> but yeah, anyways guys, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.